today to talk about home safety and fall prevention. It is my pleasure to welcome our guest, Larry Weinstein, who's here with us today. Larry, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Um, so before we get started, I, I want to um, let you know a few things. I will be sharing the, um, the link to the recorded webinar today so that you can uh, review it at your convenience. Um, and we'll also be sending out the, um, the tool that we're going to be sharing today, which is 12 tips that you can implement today to make your home more user friendly. So I'll be sending those resources out later. And then I wanted to just get started by sharing a little bit about, um, about Elder Help, who we are and what we do. So Elder Help is a private nonprofit organization that has been around for 45 years, serving seniors in San Diego County. Our mission is to provide personalized services and information that help seniors remain independent and live with dignity in their own homes. So we provide direct services through volunteers who can help in the home and with transportation. We also offer care coordination and a roommate matching service. And then we've also um, identified that uh, family caregivers are a really important part of, of who we want to support. And so a few years ago, we created this Employed Family Caregiver Support Program. And the program has a lot of resources that are specific for employed family caregivers, but like this webinar today, can be relevant for all family caregivers. And so through this program, we offer these monthly webinars. We can also offer on-site presentations and workshops at your place of work. So if that's something that you might be interested in or that your employer or HR department might be interested in, we can offer that. We can also attend and participate in um, employee health and wellness expos. And then we have a series of five online courses that I'll tell you about a little later uh, today as well. You can go on and learn more about um, preparing for your journey as, of, as a family caregiver there. So I'd like to just um, get started by sharing a little bit about Larry. I, I'd like to um, tell people about your background. So um, Larry was educated at Pratt Institute in architectural and product design. He's also a Korean veteran. Um, his former career was as a founder and CEO of a large, successful commercial and residential design build for, for, firm for over four decades, with offices in three major cities. Larry's numerous design build projects consisted of a great amount of new and renovated office, commercial, hospitality, retail, industrial, hospital, and medical facilities, plus many single and multifamily living environmental projects. A good number of his projects focused on designing and building both on-site and modular, modular living environments for older adults, and also for people of all ages and disabilities. He continues to write the materials and product specifications for numerous housing product projects. And since 1998, Mr. Weinstein has dedicated his life's mission to helping people of all ages make certain changes in their homes to allow them to live with maximum independence, comfort, safety, and energy efficiency by teaching them about universal, accessible, and adaptive design. Larry was the AARP National Events and Expo's livable housing consultant for over a decade. He works with many national and local organizations and continues to be involved with AARP. He actively presents lectures and workshops at many events and conferences. Mr. Weinstein has written and continues to write numerous articles that appear in national and local magazines and other publications about designing and building living environments that incorporate new and innovative materials, products, and technologies that help people achieve and maintain enjoyable, safe, sustainable, energy smart, and maximum independent living. So Larry, just to jump into some of the questions that we have today, can you tell us about how you got started in this field? In uh, honor about the year 2000, when my wife and I moved from the Bay Area down to San Diego, uh, I decided I was going to retire after over four decades of designing the building. And um, Mary turned to me and said, you're going to retire. And, let's do that. <laughs> and uh, a little less than a year later, I was retained by AARP national as their livable homes consultant mm -hmm. and became involved with them uh, mary and i both did my wife and i both did 
Uh, we would put on huge events in different cities all over the country, sure. anywhere from 28,000 to 35,000 or more people. And I was in charge of housing and technology. Mm -hmm. uh, in that, Mary and I were, uh, uh, found the good fortune of coming face to face with hundreds of thousands of age, about 50 plus people. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because we're non profit, we don't sell anything, we were able to. Uh, question people to find out what people are really thinking about, what people are really concerned about as they get older. Sure. And uh, I found that uh, there's a dire need, as we've discussed, mm -hmm. for intuitive technologies that will help uh, people age successfully, especially people who are either on the receiving end of caregiving mm -hmm. and people who are, who are uh, giving the care most younger people, and even though I had no idea of the enormous responsibility that the caregiver uh, faces them day by day and moment by moment. And for many, there's, there's no respite, there's no relief. And uh, I, for one, uh, feel that uh, the focus of what we're doing in uh, universal and universal design and aging in place design, intuitive design, uh, is very timely and appropriate for our vast 80 million boomer, boomer and beyond the aging population. Sure, yeah, great. And I I think that, that we can all agree that fall prevention is a really important part of, of home safety and, and um, design and those kinds of things. Can you tell us a little bit about um, where the majority of falls occur in the home and why that might happen? Um. Most of the falls that occur in living environments, whether they be homes or apartments, occur in the bathrooms and kitchens. Okay. And uh, the major culprits of that have to do with poor lighting, slippery floors, and uh, poor uh, products such as grab bars or safety bars, as we call them, mm -hmm. uh, so that people can stabilize their balance when they get in and out of the shower. Mm -hmm. uh, the other really, really uh, strong concern I have has to do with we're living in uh, a country now where there's an opioid epidemic mm -hmm. and many of the opioids that are dispensed and dispensed by our medical world to people uh, to a point where they go beyond just helping a person. The opioids are very addictive mm -hmm. and other painkillers are very addictive and they really affect one sense of balance. Sure. I feel it's very ironic since I'm on the uh, mm -hmm. San Diego Falls Prevention Task Force, I've fallen three times. And all three times have been either due to a simply for uh, my poor sense of the balance because I've been under medication after major surgeries. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's a major crisis. There is, and it's not just for older people, it's for people of all ages. If you look at the uh, demographics of children, uh, 13 and under, that are admitted to hospital ERs, mm -hmm. it's incredible the amount of children that are admitted because of, of falls in, mostly in the bathrooms. Okay. And they can't reach to a sink, so they step on a stool. Uh -huh. uh, adults, when they change a light bulb, get on the folding chair or a chair, and they lose their balance, mm -hmm. they change a light bulb, they have no idea of their, that there are other technologies uh, available today, so they don't have to change light bulbs. Mm -hmm. So that's that that. Yeah, it definitely does. Thank you. And we have up on the screen right now the first the first six of our 12 things that you can do yourself right now to make your home more user friendly. And we'll go to the next slide in a little bit and show um, the next the next set of six. But can you tell us a little bit about how this list got started? What was the genesis of this list? And are, is there anything that you would highlight on it? Um, for instance, you know, certain products that you might recommend over others or where people can buy some of these things, you know, at the store, any of those kinds of things. So this was developed through, not through, but through and with AARP, mm -hmm. 40 million members. Uh, that uh, a book was developed called Home Fit. Uh -huh. And from the Home Fit, which is a pretty sizable booklet, uh, my wife and I decided when we speak at these large events, that it would be really nice to not to have people just a big book, but to give people at least 12 things, easy things, mm -hmm. that when they leave the workshops or seminars that we do, they can go home and they're affordable, they're easy to do, 
And uh, once people get jump started with doing things, they can go into doing other things as well. So thanks to Mary, uh, we were able to narrow, narrow it down to 12 essential things that are easy things that are reasonably priced that people can realize immediate benefits from. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So is there, are there anything here, like for number one, for instance, are there any particular nightlife that you, you know, might recommend people buy? I got the um, many different kinds of nightlights what one can get at the big box stores. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm a member of IES, Illumination Engineering Society. And I'm also, to a certain degree, legally blind. Mm -hmm. So uh, firsthand, as my own guinea pig, I found that uh, on a national basis, we recommend, highly recommend, that night lights be uh, non-glare producing, that the lights produce downward, mm -hmm. and also that the light produce be amber or yellow in color, mm -hmm. and not white, because a white light at night will cause temporary, temporary blindness, mm -hmm. and where the, the, the light itself become possibly the cause of injury. Mm -hmm. And there's one manufacturer of the many that we've been testing and evaluating that we found very good success with. One, because it, it works, it's battery powered, it's available with the yellow light, it's very affordable. Mm -hmm. You can get it online through their own website mm -hmm. uh, or uh, uh, through Amazon. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's called Mr. Beams, B-E-A-M-S, okay. and they have a number of different products, but their most inexpensive freestanding night lights are great. Right. Uh, the other thing uh, is to give uh, some good, good, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, to utilize bread bars, mm -hmm. we call them safety bars, and they're not age appropriate, they're for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that they have to be properly installed so they don't pull out of the wall. We found that that works exceptionally well. Uh, we also find uh, clutter for people who get clutter out of the house. People trip very easily in their own homes on extension cords, on carpeting rugs. I'm, Unfortunately, a pack rat. Mm -hmm. and, uh, our <laughs> we have to. Uh, my wife is constantly reminding me, <laughs> "Why, Larry? Can you move this out?" Mm -hmm. I tripped on things. Sure. Uh, but the, the list is is all twelve items are very important. Yeah, yeah. And if people will take the time to just make a commitment to go home and just take the list of twelve items and walk through their own home or apartment and check off those things of, of which they. Uh, feel uh, are present in their homes mm -hmm. and what they can do to change those things. They'll be off to a really good start of home safety. Sure, that's great. And I want to mention along those lines too that, that Elder Help also has a team that can help to install grab bars and things like that, some of those home safety measures and, and those kinds of things. So yes, I found that too. Yeah. San Diego grab bar, for example, is a very good example of it's a small operation, they're very ethical, they're very reasonably priced, mm -hmm. and they know how to install their bars successfully. Sure. Yeah, that's great. And we will have um, Mr. Beams and San Diego Grab Bars on our resource list at the end of this PowerPoint, so you'll be able to, to go to those links and go directly to those websites and buy from, from their, their website. Um, so, Let's see here. Are there? Um, you have some really great insights about simple, unique solutions. These are some of the things that we've been talking about that people can consider to make their homes healthier and um, more user friendly. Um, can you share any? Are there any additional ideas that you want to share with us around those lines? Along those lines. Well, most homes are not, and most apartments are not user friendly. Mm -hmm. They're not counterintuitive and. Uh, we have obstacles in our homes that are inherent in the design of living environments. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1998, a group of us throughout the country developed a program called Universal Design or Aging in Place Design, which is different than ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. And it's intuitive ways to make your homes more user-friendly, more comfortable, and as people, for all people of all, of all ages, mm -hmm. uh, homes were originally designed and they're still being built uh, uh, based upon the premise that uh, the average American is 20 years old. Mm -hmm. It's a he, not a she. He is in perfect health. Mm -hmm. 
and he is six foot tall. And he may exist, but for a very short period of time. Uh, we have a diversity of people. God makes us each uniquely different in height, weight, size, and levels of ability. And universal design and ancient and place design addresses that. There are many things that can be done in renovation, in modeling, and in new construction. And if people, uh, a number of years ago, uh, in conducting workshops, I received so many inquiries that my wife and I developed a website mm -hmm. uh, called uh, livablehomes.org. And we have a, a great way where you can go to a house from the outside in. Mm -hmm. We have pictures and descriptive or narrative so that people can go room by room and uh, get some really good ideas. Some are free, mm -hmm. uh, some are low in cost, and some cost quite a bit. But uh, there's a wealth of information on the website. You'll give people a website later on. Sure, yeah, that will be on our resource page too. So people can kind of go through and see what renovations may fit for them, whether it's something simple like our 12 tips here or major renovations or if somebody's looking for a new house, maybe some things to look for in that that process okay. too. Uh, I'd like to uh, state that we're a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and most of the information that people get uh, come from for-profit entities that oftentimes don't know what they're talking about, the big box stores and the like. Mm -hmm. like. And of course the internet where you can get brilliant ideas from people who know a great deal mm -hmm. about nothing. Sure. <laughs> and, uh, because we are a nonprofit and we sell nothing, we're a consumer reports type of nonprofit. And we have a wealth of resources to evaluate different technologies and products. I would very much ask people to go to our website and look through it, mm -hmm. and you'll find things that uh, we've researched. They're not our opinion. Mm -hmm. That's not what we think, it's what we know that works through extensive resource and uh, research and technology work done by major corporations, hospitals, and healthcare facilities. Yeah, that's great. Okay. And then I wanted to touch on um, on dementia care and maybe some um, innovations and renovations that may be good for that. So for our audience members who may be caring for a person with dementia, do you have any specific suggestions or thoughts regarding home modifications for dementia care? Uh, two things after extensive testing uh, to qualified physicians, it has been found that uh, lighting in living environment, if there are spots, there are dark areas in the ceiling that are not evenly illuminated, we call it ambient lighting or general lighting, mm -hmm. it has to be, even if it's not, the dark areas in the ceiling uh, will be perceived by people with dementia and very young children as well mm -hmm. as monsters, as scary entities, and it, it, they really evoke fear. So uh, making sure that lighting in rooms uh, provided, in addition to task lighting, which is point of use lighting, that there's really good, high quality, glare free ambient lighting mm -hmm. uh, to create an evenly lit ceiling area for people. Mm -hmm. Another thing, colors uh, in a room, the colors you paint a room with, uh, can have a very uh, detrimental effect on the psyche and psychology of people with dementia. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do recommend, and this is not my opinion, but after much research throughout the country, to pick soft, soothing uh, colors here, the softer earth tones, mm -hmm. not the bold, bright colors mm -hmm. that tend to agitate people. Okay. And this also applies to very young children as well. Sure. Yeah, and I think that leads well into our next question, which we've talked about already, which is how universal and accessible design principles are really good for everybody, not just for older people, but, but for people of all ages and abilities. Is there anything you would want to add on to that discussion? Uh, what I would like to say is that we have, we meaning, uh, there's a wealth of professionals that have been, when we started in 1998, uh, uh, with five of us, there are now thousands of people involved, and in it's become pretty much a buzzword in the design industry, universal design, mm -hmm. aging in place design, uh, that uh, much of, of what is out there, the new technologies, might be great for a young, perfectly healthy, well, uh, optimal vision person, mm -hmm. but most people are not that way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when one selects products and materials and technologies 
that it has to be user friendly or intuitive, that a person is, does not have to require a great deal of education or forethought to be able to make things work. Mm -hmm. And you'll see all that on the website, by the way, too. Great. Uh, I'd like to also say one section of our website, we have quite a few articles, national articles, that address different areas of the home and technologies and products. Mm -hmm. So uh, I welcome people to please go on the website. Again, we're selling nothing. Uh, we want to help people. It's not my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the uh, resources of many professionals from all over the country, great. all over the world. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's a great resource. We, we've been on the website too and, and spend some time you know looking at all the resources there so definitely want to encourage everybody to to look at the website and the website is also intuitive yes it's easy by design, to, uh, by design. <laughs> yes we try to make it where almost anyone can go through it we have no flash other than a movie or a video and, mm -hmm. uh, some slides to make it where it is very user friendly mm -hmm. very inviting the people to research through. Great. Yeah, that'll be a great resource. We have about a, a few more minutes before we field some questions. Is there anything else about home safety, fall prevention that you might want to share with, with our audience of caregivers and, and also some volunteers from Elder Health that you think might be helpful? Uh, what I would like to say is that false prevention is a very critically important element of living. Mm -hmm. That as people get older, uh, if one were to study the amount of hip replacements necessary in our older population, mm -hmm. that somebody who is older, who ends up breaking the hip, needs a hip replacement, will seldom if ever fully recover. Mm -hmm. So rather than remedial work of trying to fix a person after the fact, to make our homes and apartments, and this is up to the caregivers too, mm -hmm. to make our homes and apartments where we do everything to prevent falls from occurring, sure. rather than trying to do patchwork afterwards. Mm -hmm. And this list that, that you put together is a great place for people to get started, you know, with some of I'll vouch for I fall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um well I think we'll look and see oh we can talk about the resources here too. So we have um these resources up on the screen, this is what we've talked about today. So um, Smart Livable Homes is the um, website that Larry has mentioned here. Um, just to note that there's no E in livable, so it's um, Smart L-I-V-A-B-L-E Homes. And if you have any um, real specific questions that you might... The website is just livablehomes.org. Livablehomes.org, right. And if you have any... Um, Specific questions for Larry, uh, there is a, a link to contact on the website, um, and you can send those questions into him for, to, for him to field. Um, and then the other resource I wanted to highlight here is the Elder Help courses. So this is the, the courses that I mentioned earlier. Um, there are five courses that are launched right now. Um, they're all designed to help you better understand the journey of caregiving. And they include some really great um, comprehensive resources and tools that you can print and download um, and use sort of in the evolution of caregiving. So th those are great resources. Um, and in course four, which is about dementia and caregiving, um, there is a, a home safety assessment for people who have dementia. So um, it's a little bit more detail about home safety um, for caregivers who, who are caring for people with dementia, but it can be used um, by everybody too. So One thing I'd like to add to on our website, mm -hmm. we have a section called Checklist. Mm -hmm. And the checklist takes you from outside the home. It's very, very uh, expansive. It covers everything. A little check so somebody can go, starting with the outside, mm -hmm. through their home and pick those items of immediate importance, those items, items they can't afford, those items they feel are necess necessary, mm -hmm. and they're, they're free to reproduce or Great. copy that checklist yeah. and use it within their own living environment. Great, yeah, that's really good to know. Thank you. And then um, we also have Mr. Beam's Nightlights on here. You can you can access all of Mr. Beam's products and the amber, light, the amber nightlights that Larry has mentioned are on the website as well. And then San Diego grab bars, if you are interested in purchasing grab bars. 
Is there anything about grab bar installation that people should know about in particular? You mentioned that they need to be anchored properly in the wall. Right. Is there Many anything older about homes and some newer homes have tile walls. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, the tile is applied to gypsum or sheetrock. Mm -hmm. And unless the grab bar is securely attached into the wall, the grab bar itself can be the cause of an accident. Mm. So it's really very important that when grab bars, or I like to call them safety bars, sure. when safety bars are installed, that they be done in such a way where they support up to 250 pounds mm -hmm. of weight, which is the ADA regulation, and we do this throughout the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so proper installation is very, very important. Okay. There have been instances where people have pulled the grab bars out of the wall. One other thing I'd like to, to add, uh, we advocate wherever possible that if you're putting towel bars in your bathroom, make the towel bars also to be grab bars. Mm. There are a lot of accidents that people uh, suffer from where they grab for a, a towel bar, and the mm. towel bar is a very light gauge metal or plastic, and it pulls right out of the wall oh. and the person goes down. Interesting. So there are some things that can be multifunctional. You yes. know, it's a, it's a, is, are there any other things like that that people can consider? Well, I, uh, we, we have in our own home, because I, I have balance problems, mm -hmm. there are uh, bars available that uh, they don't have to be permanently secure, they work with tension. They're floor to ceiling bars, mm -hmm. and uh, they give the person the proper support when you get out of the shower and you want to dry your feet or your legs, that you can have the bar for support. Mm -hmm. uh, I rely on, on, on my bar very often. That's great. When I first put it in, I had this feeling that it would be a this disability stigma, well, it's turned into a godsend. Yeah, uh, sure. Something very important. Yeah, and if people were looking to purchase a product like that, what would they search for and where would they search for it? I would suggest for things like that, uh, uh, I'd like to talk about another resource that's very good. It's Harmony Home Medical Supply. Okay. Here in San Diego. Erica Sells is the owner. She has a heart to really working and helping caregivers, mm -hmm. and they have all of those products available. Mm -hmm. Not only walk aids and safety bars and rolling showers and everything else, uh, that you contact Harmony Home Medical Supply uh, uh, here in uh, on Cameron Boulevard here in San Diego. Okay, great. Well, then I think um, we can open it up for questions if there are any. We'll give a um, give our audience here a few minutes to answer ask any questions. Um, if there aren't any questions, if you happen to have them later, you can um, reach out to me. There's a little bit of animation here in our PowerPoint. Um, you can reach out to me. I'll, I'll put my contact information up on the screen in just a moment. I also want to mention um, that our next webinar in, in our family caregiving series will be on March 21st at 11 a.m. Um, and our last webinar on older adult drivers will be available on our website shortly, so you'll be able to access that. And then our contact information is here. So this is general elder help information if you'd like to learn more about our services. Um, and then this is my contact information. You can call me, email me, connect with me on LinkedIn. And then, like I mentioned, Larry can be um, reached through the um, livablehomes.org website if you just click contact. So if you have any very specific questions about um, home safety, you can go through that channel as well. It would be home safety and accessibility. Home safety and accessibility, yes. sure. Yeah. So it, yeah, I don't, it doesn't look like any questions are coming through, so um, feel free to hang on the line if you'd like to ask questions. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you again, Larry, for being here and sharing your expertise with